We're back here in Pillars of Eternity. We are in the Gift. We are standing outside the Salty Mast uh, establishment. And I'm looking for what to do next. I said I might work on the main quest next, but then I was looking at this final act uh, quest, which is has me investigating some disappearances. Curran, a Dunreed Row cipher, asked me to look into some disappearances that he's too busy to investigate. Curran suspects that animancers are behind it, and he wants me to resolve the matter by any means I can. So I'm supposed to speak with three contacts. There's three missing individuals, and the individuals who reported the disappearances, Ali, Laura, and Elga, might be worth talking to. One of them is at the very brothel that I was just at in the last episode. Ali! So, I'm gonna go find her and talk to her. This sounds like the kind of thing that will help with my reputation. All right, so where's Ollie? There's Ollie. All right, then. The man is at a table by himself, but he constantly glances at the opposite bench as if waiting for someone. He reeks of alcohol, and he moves with the torpor of someone who's gotten used to spending most of his time drunk. This table's taken. Find another. He spreads his elbows on the wood and pulls his drink between them. Uh, I've got some questions about Lendry. I believe he or she is missing. His face twists into a confused scowl. What's it to you? Um, I, I, well, Lendry was your friend. The least you can do is answer a few questions, right? Ollie eyes you warily. All right, fine. You don't have to get your small clothes in a knot about it. So what was it you were wanting with Lendry? Well, just tell me about Lendry. He spent most of his time here drinking with me. Tells you enough, doesn't it? He takes a gulp of his drink and shrugs. He didn't volunteer details, and I didn't ask, but he had a working man's hands and a working man's taste for drink. <laughs> when, <laughs> when and where did you last see Lendry? Right here, getting drinks with me. He slaps a spot on the bench. Just like we have every night for the last five years. I couldn't actually tell you much about him, and I think he preferred it that way. He frowns at the rough wood grain of the table. It's probably why we got on so well. Plenty of things we didn't talk about. Anyway, I remember that night because he said things were finally turning around. He was going to find a steady job, clean up, have another crack at the respectable life. I told him in that case... He could buy the drinks. <laughs> he traces the rim of his cup. Well, that's when she showed up. Hmm, who's this woman you're talking about? A sly smile stretches across his face. A real fancy lady. Name's Lumdala. He taps his head. I don't usually remember much these days, but I remember her. Usually you have to pay a month's copper to spend time with a woman like that. Balumdella, he shakes his head. She was falling all over Lendry that night. Left with him, too. Hmm. Where did Lendry and Lumdella go? A gruff laugh rattles his throat. A gruff laugh. Why do I keep putting a T on the end of laugh? I don't know. A gruff laugh rattles his throat. <laughs> she said they were going on to see some frilly performance. If you ask me, they had their own plans to perform that night. <sighs> he makes an obscene gesture and grins. Uh, wink, wink, know what I mean? Yup, yeah, yup, yeah, yup. Yeah. She just said they had to pick something up at her house in Copper Lane first. Some cozy little place by the northern gate. He picks up his cup. Even a drunk like me knows what that means. 
For what it's worth, she said she earns her going over at that amphitheater in Copper Lane. That's where she said they were going to see their show. Maybe someone there saw him. Alright, that's all I need to know right now. See ya. Ollie nods. Right, let me know if you find him, yeah? Cause that bastard owes me around if he's found the good life. I remember that stage. Ollie told me that a woman named Lumdala left with Lendry the last time he saw him. They were going to her home in Copper Lane, somewhere near the northern end of the district. That name sounds familiar, actually. By the flame, your mother never gave you the talk? Uh, you, you know what I mean. How do I, um, um, get started? Find the fellow you like and jiggle that purse of yours. Should do the trick. But, uh, which, which one? Blazes, girl, if you can't make up your mind, give me some of your coppers and I'll have some fun for you. <laughs> well, the conversation's over here in this place. Let's get out of here. I'm uncomfortable with this situation. I bet they'll have another group conversation. Oh, not this time. Okay, so let's go... We're going back to Copper Lane is where we're going now. To the amphitheater. I wonder if Lumdala was one of the performers at the amphitheater. I remember they were practicing some sort of play there as I walked by, and at the time I was not really interested in it. Little did I know it would be part of a murder investigation. Oh, we're going across the bridge. The Stelgir slain, on rides Mokka, great hero of our tale. Though the road is long and the fighting fierce, my courage will not fail. Her soul shines bright, her heart is true, but ahead lie greater dangers. The hundred poison arrows of the Crimson Serpent's rangers. Oh, there's Lamdala right there. The statuesque woman has a gaze that could cut stone. She turns her chiseled cheekbones to the sky and favors you with a look of acknowledgement. Her eyes shimmer under silvered eyeshadow and a razor-precise line of coal. Before you can speak, she throws her hand up in dramatic fashion. Welcome. Autographs after the performance, please. Great art requires great concentration, and greatness is expected from the revel of stars. Uh, what is the Revel of Stars? We are the finest theater troupe in the city. We believe that the best art is immersive and true to life. She looks at the amphitheater with a rapturous expression. We stage our performances right here in Copper Lane for the edification of all. Uh, but I suppose I can spare a moment for a fan. Um, I'm here because a guy named Ollie said his friend Lendry was last seen with you. Lumdala lets out a big laugh. <laughs> that drunken Andra's gift. Men flatter themselves when it comes to the attentions of a beautiful woman. The pallid knight herself could waltz into that bar and he'd believe she was there to sit on his lap and listen to body stories. Sagani turns to you, her eyes wide with mischief. That reminds me, have you heard the one about the fisherwoman and the long-finned ice-sucker? She glances around. Uh, perhaps I should tell it another time. Well, Limdala, I, I trust his word. Well, I I'm just here analyzing the facts. Just the facts, ma'am. <laughs> Get it? Just the facts? And the facts are that one of us stinks of cheap ale and desperation while the other has a long and illustrious career. 
She tilts her head toward you. Consider well which is more of a credible source. Uh, Aloth chimes in. Well, I, I kinda her sort. Nay to be trusted. <laughs> why, why can't we get Matt Mercer to do that? Because <laughs> I, I can't do any of that. I, I cani her sort, nigh to be trusted. Whatever that means. Um, anyway, uh, what do you do exactly? That depends entirely on the demands of the role. She lays a slender hand on her chest. I am the pallid knight, the widow of the wood, and the warrior queen Makka, all at different times. To live a different life each day is a glorious thing indeed, my friend. Um, well, does the Revel of Stars take in many new members? But of course, good drama is a bomb to the soul, and we wish to offer a true theatrical experience to as many as possible. Um, what kind of members do you take? We'll take in the new and the old, the tall and the small, the experienced and inexperienced. Whoever is best suited to fulfill a role to the utmost. Well, how long do you keep members? As long as they are able to satisfy the demands of their roles. She smooths a wayward strand of hair. True acting can be a grueling process, so some last longer than others. Well... Uh, if you happen to know any aspiring thespians, please send them my way. Her lips stretch into a hungry smile. We always have a place for novices. Okay, farewell. Did we learn anything? I feel like we didn't learn anything by talking to Lumdala. Hail, traveler. Well, I guess... Does anybody else... Sorry, I can't talk right now. Does anybody else know anything about Lumdala? Is she a murderer? In disguise? Hmm. Well... I guess let's see who else we can, uh, we can talk to. Laura is a merchant in Copper Lane. I know just where the merchants are. Over here. What the what? Assassins? Assassins? We're beset by assassins. What in the hell? Yes. Run away, run away, everyone. Where's my tank? My tank is in the back. Please. Oh. Tank, get up there. Oh. Engage. Oh. Ah. What? Let's uh let's cast. Let's charm that that mage over there. Oh damn. Uh that didn't work. And for some reason I just charged right next to the enemy. Oh, there we go. That now it worked. Wait, is my ah oh, the pet's down? Why why did I charge right at the enemy? That was not very smart. Let's do a whisper of treason on this guy that's attacking me. Quickly, please, quickly. There we go. Oh, I just got spider webbed again. Why did I jump? Why did I charge right to the front like that? That was not very smart. I was not prepared for this combat engagement. Uh, let's give us some armor here. And 
let's give us... Um, I don't think we need healing. Hi? I do think. Uh... <coughs> a powerful spell would be warranted here. Oh, great. Oh, well, that's not the one I wanted to cast. How about, let's do a lightning bolt at this assassin over here. Boom! <laughs> lightning everywhere. How may I help? How about another, another big spell at that mage? Yes! Obliterated her! Oh man, that guy was tough. This thing isn't doing the job. This thing isn't doing... This guy's just standing up here. Can't get a good shot at this. Your tail ends. Right. Guard. Justice here, guard. Are you not gonna help me? You're just standing there. This guard's just walking around like, oh, I guess uh, people just fighting in the streets. It's fine. Nothing to see here. Oh, <laughs> guys, just literally. I literally just walked right past the fight. Oh my gosh, you guys. You guys, I got bruised ribs after that. Ugh. I don't know why, but I charged right into the front lines for some reason. That wasn't very smart. There's a scrawled note here. Oh, Wudica hoods. Assassins from the Temple of Wudica, I suspect. Written on this scrap of parchment is a concise but detailed description of you, including your name, your distinguishing features, and everyone you're known to have associated with in your brief time in the Deerwood. Oh man, I'm a, I'm a hunted man, you guys. Oh, another grimoire. We'll take that. Well, that was unexpected. Wasn't expecting to run into trouble tonight. I guess I should be a little more careful just running through the streets. There's Laura. Hello. Always good to see a familiar face. How can I help you? Well, I'm looking into some disappearances. I hear that your sister's gone missing. I... Laura's voice drops to a whisper. I didn't think anyone would help me. When Cora disappeared, I tried Dunreed Row, the Crucible Knights, even the dozens here. She points her thumb at the large building behind her. No one had time to look for a missing girl then. She bites her lips. That was three weeks ago. If there's anything I can tell you that will help, just ask. Well, tell me about Cora. She's my younger sister, always had a head full of dreams. She was convinced there was something special waiting for her, that she'd be remembered and happy and important. Laura shakes her head. She's got plenty of heart, but not the commitment to match. Still, when she got that theater job, I thought she was about to turn around. A theater job? Hmm, I'm sensing a pattern. What was Cora doing around the time she disappeared? She'd just gotten into this acting troupe called the... the, uh... Laura's brows knit. Um, you know this. Concentrate.
You know this. Concentrate. The Revel of Stars, that's it. She was pretty ex inexperienced. Laura hesitates. I think that's why she was so excited to get a role. I'm afraid I don't know anything else about it. Well, I definitely am sensing a pattern here. I think we have an acting troupe of doom in this town. So when and where did you last see your sister? She was at our house getting ready for her big performance. That was three weeks ago. Did you see Cora with anyone when she disappeared? Was it Lumdala? She was... is... very sociable. She's always enjoyed crowds. I'm afraid I can't narrow it down beyond that. Well, that's all I need right now. Laura puts both hands over her heart. You don't know how much this means to me, just to know that someone's actually looking for her. Anything else I can do for you? No, not for for now. Bye. Laura told me that her sister Cora joined an acting troupe called the Revel of Stars before she disappeared. Well, I mean, I feel like I have enough information now to make an accusation, but we'll go through with the third one. We'll go to the third one just, just for the sake of completion. So we gotta go to Brackenbury for the third one. Which is where? Brackenbury's down here. Let's keep an eye out for assassins this time. That poor guy's still standing there, Dalton. Still standing there pining over his lost love. All right, so who are we looking for? Uh, it's just somewhere in Brackenbury. We're just looking for somebody somewhere in Brackenbury. Elka. House of uh, First Fire Sanitarium. Hadrid House. Charred Barrel. Probably in the Charred Barrel, I would think. That's my guess. Looking for an Elka in the charred barrel. Everybody can be found in the taverns. Right? Is there an Elka here? Are there any Elkas around? Oh, there's a theater here. Hmm. Let's check upstairs for Elka. Oh, there's pirates upstairs, I remember now. Well, I don't see her. So my first... My first attempt to find her has failed. So let's just assume she's not in here. He or she. I don't know if it's a he or she. A plant. Where's Elka? Oh, Elka, what's in this barrel? It's cocoa. There isn't so much as a spot on these oranges. Is there an Elka about? There's Cyril. Oh, it's Cyril. You should have seen the looks on those nobles' faces when I moved in. Is that the same Cyril? Oh, there's Elka. Gods keep you. This dwarven woman is dressed and perfumed like a member of the nobility, but her sun-reddened skin and sweat-stained outfit suggest that she's been out here for quite some time. Afraid I don't have time just now. Well, I'm investigating Kendall's disappearance. Her eyebrows rise. That little Orlan finally got serious about this case, eh? 
Well, Dunreed Row is strapped for resources at the moment, so Curran sent me. Well, I'm glad someone's on it. She rolls her eyes. Anyway, I'll tell you whatever I can. What do you need to know? Well, tell me about Kendall. Did he join an acting troupe? What's to tell? He was a pretty young lad. Not the brightest of the bunch, but always pleasant company. And how do you know Kendall? Elka smirks. Well, we met up from time to time over the past few months. It was just a fling, really. Wasn't going to last. She picks at the corner of her sleeve and looks away. He was a little fool, but a sweet little fool. And what was Kendall doing before he disappeared? She laughs sadly. The worst blazing rendition of the general speech from the Widow of the Wood that I've ever heard. She shakes her head. I love that fellow, but he was a tragic failure. Yet somehow he managed to get in with an acting troupe. Aha! Uh -huh. Aha! Uh -huh. The truth will out. And when and where did you last speak to Kendall? Uh, it was a week ago. He came back to my house for a bit of fun. Uh, afterwards, we fell asleep. And when I woke up, he was gone. No note, nothing. Had you noticed anything different about Kendall lately? Well, he'd started hanging out with a bunch of actors. Seemed all right, except for that woman. She scowls. That woman with her long, willowy legs and slender arms always came around wearing those low-cut dresses and impossible shoes. Uh, what was her name? Her expression hardens. I don't know. I never cared to learn it. She uncrosses her arms and lets them slowly fall to her sides. Uh, I didn't realize it might be important. Well, that's okay. I know exactly who it was anyway. I know exactly the woman you're talking about. I will now go accuse her of murder. Anyway, that's all the questions I have right now. Well, if you think of any more, you know where I'll be. Oh. Greetings. Oh, never mind. One of the dialogue choices was something like, what was all that fighting about? And I forgot to ask that one. But it's gone now, so I guess I, I will never ask that question. So, the evidence points toward a woman named Lumdala and a theater group called the Revel of Stars. There's an amphitheater in Copper Lane. Perhaps I can find her there. So we actually are going to go accuse her of Moida. I thought we would go back to the, to the police first, but I guess not. We're solving this crime on our own. Back to Copper Lane. I was right there. I could have arrested her on my first encounter. Maybe she's she's probably gone on the lamb now. She's been Out hearing about... Hand. Turning purple. I'd have to cut it off. I warned you not to pet him. If I'm not supposed to pet him, why is he so soft? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. <laughs> That's hilarious. Don't pet the white foxes. That's the lesson we've learned here. All right, Lumdella. Time for handcuffs. Hello. I really should spend this time getting into character. Well, before that, I'm looking for... Kendall. Apparently, he joined your group. No experience? Terrible actor? Sound familiar? She narrows her silvered eyes. I'm not sure who this Kendall is or why you would malign our talent, but rest assured that we have a process for evoking a satisfying performance from even the most inexperienced players. I suppose... I can spare a moment for a fan. A further moment, that is, since I've been talking to you. Okay, I was wondering if a woman named Cora was part of your group. Well, I can't say I recognize the name. She suddenly seems focused on the length of her fingernails. Mm, that's odd. Her sister said she was part of the Revel of Stars. Maybe, but what should I know about it? My work requires great focus and attention. She flicks her fingertips in frustration. I don't have time to coach every young amateur who joins our troupe for a week. 
Surely there's someone else you can ask about all this. I'm but a humble actor. You're connected to three recent disappearances that you claim to know nothing about. Then why else do you expect me to s Then, wait, let me say that again. Then what else do you expect me to say on the subject? She sighs and turns her face to the sky. If you'll excuse me, I have a performance to attend to. A young man steps up next to you, his gaze fixed on the other actors, his voice low. Meet me in Lumdala's house. I know what's going on. He claps his hands and whistles at the other actors. Well done, well done indeed. Oh, a guy named Cadel. Cadel. Ah, Cadel, one of Lumdala's fellow actors, wanted to speak to me in private at Lumdala's house in Copper Lane. He indicated that Lumdala is more involved with the disappearances than she let on. Well, no kidding. Lumdala's place, huh? That's where I recognize that name, because it's on the map somewhere, isn't it? There it is, yeah. Well, all right, everyone, prepare for an ambush. I feel we may be walking into danger here. Everyone protect me, because I have bruised ribs from the assassins that were, were there, were attacking us a while back. All right, let's barge into this place. We'll get to the bottom of this mystery. Hmm, Lumdella has a painting on the wall. This painting depicts the famous scene from The Light of Dawn in which the Traveler and the Ghost happen upon a starving man. The famous scene, indeed. Hmm. I suppose it wouldn't do to steal from her just yet. Hey, it's Kadal. A young man appears before you, trembling and excited. You! I saw you with Lumdala by the amphitheater. Look, I don't know what your business is with her, but I want out of this mess. I just came by to grab my things. Just let me leave, all right? Um, eh, take a breath and calm down. Tell me what's going on so I can help. He nods, filling his lungs. Oh, thank you, but there's not much time. Lumdala's out to get me, and I need to get out of here. Maybe out of the city. Kadal reaches slowly into a satchel and produces a small key. This opens the door behind you. There's a passage in there leading down to a, uh, theater. He shudders. It's easier if you see it for yourself. He licks his lips. Uh, since I've helped you, I want your promise that you'll leave my name out of this. Aloth leans over. I'm not sure this poor fool is worth our time. We should stop Lumdala before she gets wind of us. All right, kid, I won't mention you. Oh, thank you, thank you, and good luck. He doesn't look you in the eye. I have a feeling he's involved. He's involved! He's the one who's behind it all. He's the murderer. What's going on here? Oh, secret stairs underneath the carpet. I feel like we have a license to steal everything now. Eh, it's just a bunch of clothes. Margarine's fire casts light in dark places. Let's steal her money. Let's creep down the stairs. What horrible torture dungeon does she have in the basement? Uh-oh. There's, uh, something here. What is that? A soul? A simple silken scarf is crumpled on the filthy flagstones. Essence radiates from it like heat, and the closer you get to it, the more you feel a confusing mixture of joy, surprise, and pain. I will pick up the scarf. You hold the scarf and focus on it, and the world around you shifts. Something about you shifts, too. The smooth fabric is still in your hands, but you're in a small yet cozy house, 
and Laura is looking from the scarf back to you, asking if you like it. She's smiling because the answer is written on your face. That was four years ago, but you still wear the scarf on days like today. After all, you wore it that first day you met the actress with silvered eyes, so who's to say it won't bring you luck again tonight? It's nestled around your throat, soft and warm and comforting. You're halfway through the third act, and you can feel the audience's eyes on you, hungry and attentive. You were nervous at first when that woman brought you down here. You wondered what kind of show you'd signed up for, but this has gone better than you could have hoped. You reach the end of your monologue, and the scarf tightens around your neck. It chokes the final line from your throat, which is embarrassing because your debut was going so well. But when you try to pull the scarf away, it only tightens further. You're confused, and you look to the audience, expecting someone to rush to your rescue. Then you see their eyes and that hungry, attentive look, and you understand. The stage fades to black. The scarf falls from your hand and flutters to the ground, but Cora's soul lingers, stuck between a familiar token and a question. It wants to know, but it wants to retreat. Hmm. I have a lot to read here. <laughs> this last one. What did you expect? Even your sister knew you were a terrible actress. You were naive. <laughs> what a terrible thing to say. Hmm. You had your sister's love and the courage to follow your dreams. Take comfort in that as you find your way to, to the next life. The soul glows with warmth before fading back into the fabric of the scarf. Whoa! Lumdala emerges from the shadows, her silvered eyes glowing in the darkness. Well, well, if it isn't our friend from Dunreed Row. Hmm, what do you want? She gives you an appraising look. I have a proposition. And I have my doubts, but I suppose it couldn't hurt to hear the details. Well, I'm listening. It looks like you have mirror image doppelgangers of my party here, so I should probably listen. I stage my performances for certain wealthy patrons. One in particular would make a valuable catch. You agree to a truce, and I'll give you his name. Hmm... You explain why this is a better deal for me first. Think of it this way. I only feed a demand. I'm offering you the man whose money and connections made my performances possible in the first place. Hmm. I need some time to think it over. Lumdala fingers a weapon at her side. This hesitation does not bode well for our deal. I'll give you one more chance. Now make up your mind. I wish I'd had a chance to quick save. Wait, oh, this is my party over here. And this is them over there. <laughs> I thought I thought somehow a duplicate image of my party had appeared over here and I was still over here. I thought this was my party over here on the right, but my party's over here on the left. I... I... Mm, I have to say no deal. I'm sorry, no deal. This seems like a poor choice for me. And for the city. Although, if I get the big fish, maybe I would get even better reputation. Hmm. But then, if I turn in the small fish, then there would probably be a trail of clues to lead to the big fish. I say no deal. Lumdala shrugs. As you wish. She gestures to the actors with her. Stop them. Okay. Alright, so we got a couple of archers there. We got a... Wow, my my puppy dog's way over there for some reason. There's Lamdala. Uh Hmm. 
This feels like I need um, some better placement. I feel like I want to run over here. Get yes. these two over here flanking. Um, let's do some armor of faith. Oops, let me let me do that again. Let me get that centered better. Okay, okay. Let's cast a whisper of treason on one of these actors. Oh god, what are you guys doing? You weren't supposed to run that far. Yes. Wait, wait. Following your lead. I'm trying to position you. Ready, watcher. Following your lead. All right, this this seems actually like a perfect situation for a fireball too. Oh, we're gonna hit our hit our nice little friendly pet there, but uh, maybe not. Let's center it on Lumdala. Boom! Nice. That's what I'm talking about. Oh wow, our our uh, healer's getting pummeled here by something. Um. Priest clears his or her mind, spreading that clarity to nearby allies. Okay, let's do that, I guess. Oh wow, I'm getting beat up here too. Oh, I'm down. My guy's down. Who's yelling? Somebody's yelling and screaming over here. I need to heal myself. Oh man, what is that? Got it. An arrow for this. Take out this other arrow. Is Lundala down? No, Lundala's still fighting. Um, yes, yes, let's throw some <laughs> Keep shooting at my healer. All right Now right, now on to Lumdala <laughs> Pull down Lumdala Ah, Lumdala goes down. All right, we got this thing There's another one down one left this actor is going down momentarily. <laughs> he explodes into bloody chunks. Wow, you guys. I'm, uh, I have a severe wound. I have, wow, I have 50% less healing received. I'm taking a beating in this episode, you guys. You guys are not doing very good protecting me. I'm the hero of this story. You should be protecting me more. All right, let's grab all this stuff. Oh, a nice ring. A ring of protection. Oh, damn. Fortitude, reflex, and will plus nine. And some other stuff there. Well... Are we done? I discovered that the missing people were murdered by Lumdala during special performances held in a hidden theater in the catacombs beneath Brackenbury. I slew Lumdala. She won't be holding any more special performances for her clients. Is that it? I guess I should return to uh, collect my reward. My reputation boost, presumably. Searching for secrets before I leave. Oh, secret.
Is it trapped? Oh, it's a secret room. Oh, damn. Hello? Hello? Oh, wow. It's a secret dungeon. It's a whole secret dungeon out here. <laughs> what the hell? Damn. What the hell is this? <gasps> it's the catacombs! It's the catacombs! She had a secret entrance to the catacombs. I see. Wow. That was weird. Okay, well, let's get out of here then. That would have been awkward if I'd found that before I'd cleared out the catacombs. Okay, let's head back to... Um, where... Where's Lady Webb's place? It's in Brackenbury, right? I think it's in Brackenbury. Yeah, the Hadrit House. The uh, Scotland Yard of Pillars of Eternity. Can we, can we rest after this, you guys? Because I've got bruised ribs and I'm, you know, I'm really hurt bad. All right. Curran. Greetings. Back with news, perhaps? Well, I found the missing people. They're all dead, but I found them. Yes, you've been all over Defiance Bay since we last spoke. His alert eyes search you. What did you find? Well, they were all murdered. A woman named Lumdala killed them as part of her performances. He hisses. Ah, uh, something big. I knew it. I'll send my men after her right away. Uh, well, it's too late for that. She confronted me before I could get to you, and I killed her. Indeed. Corinne's toothy smile widens. Well, I can't say I'm terribly sorry. Hey, I gained a bunch of experience points. You've been a resourceful investigator, and your shrewdness has helped resolve a most troublesome case, and saved many lives, I'm sure. Well... Eh, about my, uh, payment. Oh, oh no, I'm not gonna tell him about K-Doll. Oh, maybe K-Doll is the, the really bad guy. Well, anyway, uh, about my, uh, payment. Oh, oh, of course, you've certainly saved us a lot of work. Here, take this. It was a pleasure doing business with you. Likewise, farewell, and may you find success in your other ventures. Hey, we have gained reputation with Defiance Bay. That's what we really wanted. Mission accomplished. All right, we solved a uh, we solved a mystery. And now, now we can get back to the main story. But that's going to be it for now. See you later.